Hello everyone, welcome to the second video of Heredity and Evolution and today we are going to discuss about Mendel's Monohybrid Cross. So without wasting any more time, let's dive in directly into this video. Gregor Johann Mendel or Mendel did some really interesting experiments on his garden where he found out some important factors which are now known as genes, which we call genes now. Earlier at that time, it was not known as genes. It was known as factors, which Mendel gave the term as factor. And he said that because of certain factors, different characters are expressed in plants in different generation. Now, which character will be expressed and which character will not? These depend on some other criteria, which we are going to see today. So there are many factors that Mendel considered. We are going to take only one character into consideration now. Now Mendel did his experiments on pea plants. Now why he chose pea plants? There are some reasons. One of the most important reason is a short lifespan. In a very few days, a pea plant can grow, live its whole life and give birth to its next generation and die. So the life cycle of a pea plant is very short and hence it makes it very easy for the one who is doing the experiment to do it in a short space of time. Now if you had chosen a banyan tree, there would not have been possible because there would take a hundred years to live or maybe a few hundred years to live. So that's why he chose pea plant and there were many characters actually Mendel chose seven characters. Now these characters which he chose were something that can be easily visualized like the height of the plant, the color of the seed, the shape of the seed, the flowering type, where the flower is formed and there are seven such characters. So these characters he chose which were easily visualized and today we are going to talk about the height of the plant because it is the easiest way to explain. So what Mendel did was that he took into gardening of pea plants and then he selected certain plants. Now which plants did he select? He selected some tall plants and along with them some short plants. Now what did he do with them? His idea or his uh, aim was to find out how did different characters express themselves in different generation. Now what he tried to do, he wanted to have a cross or a pollination between a tall plant and a short plant and he wanted to see what is the outcome of this. Do the plants become tall or do they become short or do they become medium height? And that's what he wanted to find out and we are going to see regarding that. So we are going to use some uh, letters, alphabets to denote something. Like capital T if we use, we are going to call it the tall D. Small T when we use, we are going to call it the short D or the dwarf one. Short or dwarf. Okay. So capital T means tall plants, small T means dwarf plants. So when we need to understand that our cells contain chromosomes and chromosomes are always found in pairs. Okay. So every time in our cell, the chromosomes these are general shapes of the chromosomes, X shape they are generally. So these chromosomes always stay in pairs. So in a human being, there are 23 pairs of chromosomes. There is 46 chromosomes, 23 pairs. So 23 into 2 gives 46. Similarly, in pea plants also, their chromosomes will always stay in such pairs. Okay. Now these characters, by capital T, we actually mean the gene which gives tallness to the plant and by small t we mean the gene which gives shortness or dwarfness to the plants. Now each chromosome has some portions in them because chromosomes contain DNA and genes are the parts of DNA. So we must understand that in the chromosomes in different portions we are going to have different genes. So now we are considering the gene for height that is tall or dwarf. So suppose here is the gene for tallness in the corresponding chromosome that means the partner of this chromosome in the pair in the same region we are also going to have the gene for tallness now it may be tall or dwarf this also will be tall or dwarf but the position is going to be the same and as the chromosomes always stay in pair we are always going to write these characters in double form means we are going to write capital T capital T or capital T small t or small t small t never as individual we are going to write it as individual I am going to tell you when so what Mendel did he took a tall plant now a tall plant means since the chromosomes are in pairs 
so if here is the dean for tallness this will be capital t this will be capital t so this is purely tall there is no gene of shortness in this or dwarfness in this so what he did he took one tall plant that contains capital t capital t genes okay and he took another plant which is short that contains small t small t genes okay now this is one of the plant this is the another another plant and he is trying to make a pollination between them a cross pollination so this plant will cross with this plant and what are the outcomes now whenever any pollination needs to take place gametes are formed i hope you know about this gametes are formed like in case of human being sperms and eggs are the gametes these are not the normal body cells these are the reproductive cells so when reproductive cells are formed what happens is these chromosomes split and they give rise to two gametes one cell will give rise to two gametes and in each gamete we are going to have only one chromosome out of the pair so when there is a pair of chromosome during the gamete formation two cells are formed this one will come here and this one will go to the next one they will not remain in pair only in case of gametes okay if you have studied about mitosis and meiosis in meiosis this is what happens reduction cell division the cell divides to form two different chromosomes if you have not tried about meiosis in class 9 i will ask you to go and watch the videos on meiosis or read your book from class 9 where you will get the idea of this so let me erase this part let's start fresh capital t capital t for the tall plant and small t small t for the dwarf plant now he wants to cross them now when he is going to cross this they are going to form the gametes so we are going to have two gametes from here having two individual capital t's and we are also going to have two gametes from here now they will pollinate now we don't know that which t will combine to which t so we will consider all of the possibilities so first this capital t can combine with this small t so what we are going to if they combine they will form one normal cell that is a zygote and the zygote is like a very normal cell where the chromosomes are found in pairs only in gametes we will have single chromosomes okay remember that so this may combine with this okay to give us a capital t small t configuration then this one can also combine with this so we can again have capital t small t now coming to this one this can combine with this one to give this and this can also combine with this one to give this okay so all these we have attained and as i told you this was a tall plant this was a dwarf plant and this is our parent generation which we will consider a p generation p generation means a parent generation means the parents which will pollinate to give rise to the offsprings so this is after the cross this is what we have and this is called the f1 generation means the first filial generation or the first generation of offsprings okay so f1 generation first filial f i l i a l filial generation or the first generation of offsprings will be very simple now what was observed he took one tall one dwarf and after the first cross what he got was all these plants showed tallness all these plants were tall so basically he took one tall plant he took one short plant he tried to pollinate them and he got one offspring that offspring was tall there were no short plants or there were no medium heighted plants now what does this actually signify if we don't know about this now mendel did not know about capital t small t whether there are factors or genes he had no idea he later on proposed these things earlier he had no idea all he could do was he could see the plants he was watching a tall plant he was watching a short plant he combined them he got one tall plant so that is all he could observe so that means what will you do suppose you are in the situation of mendel and you are doing one experiment like this you take one tall plant short plant cross them and you get one tall plant now what will it seem to you it will seem to you that tall that only tallness is present and all the shortness is gone it is not present even in the picture right when you only see a tall plant you will think that the short plant may not be having any character that is passing on to this that's why you are not watching any short plant but so based on that idea mendel was thinking he was actually perplexed where did the shortness go the character for shortness he, in, he included that in the cross but it is not visible so where did it go did it vanish or is it there but it is not being expressed 
what was the situation so to, in order to understand that one he took one plant from here any one plant from here which is capital T small t which we know but he did not know so he took one plant randomly from here and what he did he self pollinated it self pollination means you will pollinate this with this one to take the anther from this plant and put it on the stigma of the same plant so self pollination he tried to do so that there is no other contamination in order to see what will he obtain by doing a self pollination now when he did self self pollination it means this plant is pollinating with itself right so what are the possible gametes capital t from here small t from here capital t and one small t now this will go into cross so when they cross we can have capital t capital t we can have capital t small t we can also have capital t small t and we can have small t small t so here we have four offsprings four possible outcomes and what did he observe there he observed that out of the four or n number whatever it was 75 percent means out of the four three plants were tall and one plant was tall three tall plants and one short plant so this was tall this was tall this was tall and this was short now mendel did not know that here to be capital t small t capital t small t small t capital t capital t all he could see was three tall plants and one short plant that means what that means the small t in the first generation in the shortness or dwarfness in the first generation was not lost it was there but it was not visible so when he did the self pollination he could get one short plant and shortness will not come out of anywhere it means that it was present somewhere here but it was hidden later in the next generation when he did a self pollination he could get the outcome as a short plant so this signified the fact that when the first cross was done the shortness was present or the dwarf gene was present in the plant but it was not seen that means that one of the characters out of the two must be more powerful than the other right that means tallness is obviously more powerful than dwarfness that's why tallness was visible but dwarfness was not visible so that's how he came to this first law of mendel or laws of genetics as we know he said that out of that whenever there is a pair of characters one of the character will be expressed and one will not be expressed the one that will be expressed will be called the dominant character and the one that will not be expressed will be called the recessive character so the law of dominance says that only the dominant characters are expressed and the recessive characters are not expressed so in this case capital t is our dominant character and small t is our recessive character so capital t is which is both the together so the capital t when the capital t will be which will be obviously capital t will be expressed shortness will only be expressed in the absence of capital t so here we don't have any capital t both are small t that's why this plant has been small otherwise we could also have that. so this generation is called the f2 generation or the second filial generation means you can uh, consider like grandfather father and son like this okay so that is how the experiment turned out to sum it up to sum everything up he took one tall plant he took one short plant crossed them got a tall plant was confused that where did the shortness go so he decided to do a repollination and this time he did a self pollination took that offspring or took that uh, new plant and crossed it with itself and then he got four plants out of which three were tall but one was short that signified that in the middle generation there must have been the shortness hidden somewhere but it was not expressed that's how he got to say that there are some characters which are dominant and there are some characters which are not dominant or recessive dominant characters get expressed recessive characters will only be expressed in the absence of any dominant character if there is no dominant gene in that case only the recessive gene will be expressed so what is the ratio we get here so for, in order to understand the ratio we need to know two terms okay the first term is the phenotype i'm going to erase all this so we need to understand two types of ratios or two two terms phenotype and genotype 
Phenotype means what is visible to the eye, the exterior features. Genotype means what is there in the gene, like this one. Capital T, capital T, capital T, small t, capital T, small t, small t, small t. These are all the genes, the combination of genes. So this is a genotype, 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 genotype. But what we can see in the plants, we can see the plant to be tall or short, or tall or dwarf. That is the phenotype, means what you can see. So in this experiment, the last outcome in the F2 generation, we could see out of the four plants, three were tall and one was dwarf. So the ratio of tall to dwarf was, here we have three to one, that is phenotypic ratio. This we will write phenotypic ratio is three is to one, where three is for the dominant character and one is for the short character. Now for genotype, that is the genotypic ratio. Genotype means what is the type of the gene. Here we have capital T, capital T, cool. Here we have small t, small t, one of each type just like the parent. But in the middle we have something, a combination of both. One capital T, one small t, one capital T, one small t. So these are not homozygous, homozygous and heterozygous. Homozygous means if both the genes are identical, heterozygous means if the genes are not identical. So here capital T, capital T is only of one type. Right, homozygous tall. This is homozygous but dwarf. So this is also we have one type of that. And in the middle we have a heterozygous, means two different types of genes are combining. Capital T small t, capital T small t. Although they are giving the phenotype as tall, but we are not considering phenotype now, we are considering the genotype. So capital T small t, capital t, how many are there? Two are there. So one is two, two is two, one. So this is our phenotypic ratio, what we can see, three tall plants, one dwarf plant. And this is the genotypic ratio where one is pure tall means homozygous tall, both are capital T, capital T. Two are heterozygous. Heterozygous means one capital T, one small t. And one is homozygous but in the recessive character, that is dwarf. Small t, small t. So this, uh, these are the two important outcomes of Mendel's experiment. And we got to know, even actually Mendel got to know that what is actually happening inside the plant. How is how are the different characters expressed? And he could understand this through this experiment and he got the idea of the law of dominance. In addition to that, there was another law that he could define from this. That is the law of segregation. So we have studied about the law of dominance. The second law that I can talk about is law of segregation. Segregation means, segregating means to separate out. The law of segregation means when the these gametes, look at this, this gamete formation, capital T, small t, crossed with capital T, small t. These cells will segregate into gametes, means each gene will segregate out into different gametes randomly. There is no particular rule that the gene will follow, that I will go into this cell or that this gene will go into that cell, no. They randomly segregate out while gamete formation. They all will segregate, means they will split apart, separate out and then they will combine to give the final outcome. So this is the law of segregation which says that during gamete formation the genes segregate out into different gametes and then they combine which is another law, the third law which will come into our next video. The third law which is the law of independent assortment which we will talk about in our next video. As of now, there are two laws, law of dominance and law of segregation. Dominance means only the dominant character will be expressed, recessive will be expressed in the absence of dominant character. Segregation means the gametes, during gamete formation, the genes will segregate out into different gametes and then they will combine. So that is all about today's video about Mendel's first law of I mean Mendel's monohybrid cross and we got two laws, Mendel's law of dominance and Mendel's law of segregation. I hope you understood this one, a very interesting part of genetics. In the next video we are going to move on to another cross that is a dihybrid cross. That is also very interesting so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any confusion make sure you ask me in the comment section or whatsapp me or call me up anything you want to do. So thank you everyone for watching and until next time, cheers.